Northeast Europe is building a massive $6.2 billion high-speed railway link that would connect Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and Poland in a way that wasn't available ever before. Heavily funded by the European Union, the 870-kilometer Rail Baltica project is expected to complete in 2030. It will connect Baltic states to the rest of Europe, allowing trains from the continent to run uninterrupted. You will soon witness this mega-project as the largest Baltic region infrastructure project in the century. Moreover, it is environmentally friendly, powered by electricity, and producing less noise and vibration. Once completed, the old post-communist old infrastructure will be replaced by brand new high-speed railway tracks. This will allow trains to travel at top speeds of 234 kilometers an hour. But even though Rail Baltica presents an impressive commitment and dedication, it faces rising costs and canceled projects that might hinder its final success. So what could go wrong when the project is in such an advanced phase? How will it change the lives of people in Eastern Europe? Welcome to Legendary Builds. I'm Rylan. Now let's find out. So you might be wondering, why is it 2024 and Europe, the center of progress and facilities, still hasn't managed to build modern infrastructure in the northeastern region of the continent? Well, here's the problem. Last year, Preet Humal, an Estonian engineer and entrepreneur, talked to the Emerging Europe organization about the controversial nature of Rail Baltica, likening it to the controversy surrounding HS2, a big railway initiative in the UK. He pointed out a significant difference in the cost, noting that Rail Baltica is three times more expensive for Estonia compared to HS2 for the UK. It appears that Baltic countries are simply concerned about the certainty of EU funds. On top of that, in response to the delays and hiked costs, last year the Latvian government said it was assessing changes to its plans. In the center of discussion is a proposed rail bridge in Latvia's capital, Riga. But the matter of fact is that if EU funding decreases, national governments would need to step in, potentially sparking more public opposition to the project. Despite these concerns, with various parts of the project already underway, it seems unlikely that Rail Baltica will face major setbacks before its expected completion in 2026. So what is the project exactly? This ambitious project entails the construction of an 870-kilometer standard gauge railway spanning from Warsaw, Poland, to Tallinn, Estonia. There are even plans for a potential extension to Helsinki, Finland, facilitated by a mammoth $15 billion, 50-kilometer-long undersea tunnel across the Gulf of Finland. Along this extensive route, travelers can expect to encounter seven international passenger stations, strategically located in Tallinn, Parnu, and Riga, with additional stops at Riga Airport, Panavis, Kaunas, and Vilnius, with the potential for more regional stations between these hubs. Eastern Europe will experience fast connections like never before. Complementing this passenger-focused infrastructure, three multimodal freight terminals will be established in key locations, Muga Harbor in Estonia, Salaspils in Latvia, and Kaunas in Lithuania. Sustainability is at the core of Rail Baltica's design with plans for an all-electric system powered by renewable energy and equipped with the EU's cutting-edge ERTMS signaling and communications technology. Passenger trains are expected to reach speeds of up to 234 kilometers per hour, while freight trains will operate at a maximum of 120 kilometers per hour. To ensure smooth travel and minimize environmental impact, Existing sections of the railway in Poland will undergo upgrades. The route is meticulously planned to avoid Natura 2000 nature protection zones and minimize disruption to sensitive ecosystems, featuring noise barriers and approximately 38 dedicated animal passages. Safety measures include continuous fencing, 
two level intersections with roads and other railways, and pedestrian overpasses and tunnels. Once operational, Rail Baltica promises frequent service, with up to four daily trips between Tallinn and Warsaw, and potentially up to ten daily connections between Vilnius and Warsaw. Night trains to Berlin will also be available. By 2030, projections estimate an annual transport volume of 5 million passengers and 16 million tons of cargo. Rail Baltica will provide a host of benefits for the region. Though the project carries a hefty price tag of 5.8 billion euros, its cost-benefit analysis suggests potential returns of up to 16.2 billion in measurable benefits. The sheer scale of the endeavor is expected to generate 13,000 direct full-time jobs during construction, along with an additional 24,000 indirect positions. Yet, beyond its economic implications, the project carries significant political weight for the EU. Historically, the Baltics adhered to European rail standards with a gauge of 1,435 millimeters. However, Soviet occupation led to the adoption of the wider Russian gauge, measuring 1,524 millimeters. This deviation severely hampered the Baltics' rail connectivity with Europe. But the idea of the project isn't new. In 1710, Estonia and Livonia fell under Russian rule during the Great Northern War. Over the next 120 years, the Baltic region remained under Russian control. After World War I, Estonia regained independence, only to face Soviet occupation in 1945, which reinstated Russian gauge railways. In 1991, the Baltic states broke free from the Soviet Union, aspiring to integrate with the West. However, their railways' incompatibility with Europe's standard gauge caused transportation bottlenecks. In 2004, joining the EU prompted action, leading to the initiation of Rail Baltica in 2006. This was the start of something huge. After a brief pause, progress resumed. Four years later, they signed a Memorandum of Understanding. Then, in 2011, ACOM conducted a feasibility study. By 2014, a joint venture called RB Rail AS was formed to oversee the project. Finally, in 2017, Ernst and Jung conducted a cost-benefit analysis. The results were clear. The benefits of Rail Baltica far exceeded its costs, paving the way for the project's development to commence. So, Rail Baltica is a huge project that will change Northeast Europe. Its big goal is to make it easier for people to travel and for the Baltic region's economy to grow. The project is still working hard to modernize infrastructure and improve regional integration, even though it is facing problems like rising costs and not knowing if it will get EU funds. Rail Baltica will change the way people move by building high-speed rail links between Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and Poland. It might even be extended to Helsinki. Its focus on efficiency and sustainability shows that it cares about the environment and wants to provide transportation options that are fit for the future. Rail Baltica is also important for history and politics because it marks the start of European Union efforts in the Baltics again after hundreds of years of occupation and shifting of power. The project's path has had both successes and failures, but its goal of making the Baltic region more linked and prosperous is still what drives progress. As building progresses and relationships get stronger, Rail Baltica will be able to live up to its full potential as a key piece of infrastructure in Northeast Europe shaping the future of the area for generations to come. So what are your thoughts on this? Do let us know in the comments. I've been Rylan. You've been watching Legendary Builds. And until the next time.